Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And first I just have to share this with you. I got the advanced review copies today of my new book, Food Over Medicine. It's coming out in hardback in June, but I got the paperback version just that they're sending out to media people and that sort of thing. And of course I gave one to my dad, who's such a very proud papa over some of the things that are going on here at the Wellness Forum. But you can go to amazon.com and pre-order the new book, Food Over Medicine. Just a couple of announcements. Tomorrow, Wednesday, March 20th, uh, is our next Introduction to Plant-Based Nutrition class. This is the 90 minutes, um, you know, kind of great kickstart to your plant-based nutrition program, showing you all the skills you need to get started and why to eat what you're going to eat. So, and the Diet and Lifestyle course for healthcare professionals starts June 5th. This is the one taught by such incredible people like John McDougall and Ralph Moss and Neil Barnard and Alan Gold. Hammer and all the greats in this industry. And in addition to a focus on plant-based nutrition, we also cover vaccinations and musculoskeletal diseases, mental and emotional illnesses, um, lots of things that go beyond just uh, the plant-based diet. So anyway, those are some things that are coming up. And for information on any of that, you can email me or call our office. So I picked a couple of topics today to talk about, and the first one has to do with PMS. And why would we talk about that? Well, people watching this, either they're women suffering from PMS or men who are suffering from PMS because their girlfriends, wives, and significant others have it. In fact, tens of millions of women are afflicted with this, and for some, the symptoms are so severe that they're unable to go to work and they spend at least a few days every month suffering. And one of the primary causes is diet. I've covered this before in previous messages, but it's important to remind people that a plant-based diet is better. Animal foods-based diet, not so good for PMS. And I'll explain the mechanisms, just a couple of them to let you know. Um, animal foods, for example, meat and, and uh, beef, chicken, fish, very high in arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid in small amounts is okay, and it does occur in plant foods in small amounts, but in larger amounts for people who eat a, food, a diet that centers around animal foods. Um, arachidonic acid is a precursor to inflammatory prostaglandins, which can cause uterine contractions leading to PMS pain. Um, while we're on the topic of animal foods, dairy, for example, uh, contains estrogens and estrogen metabolites, which increases estrogen levels, and that can lead to more PMS symptoms. On the other hand, a plant-based diet, again, not so rich in arachidonic acid, also um, reduces estrogen levels, and it increases the production of something called sex hormone binding globulin. That's kind of a mouthful, but uh, basically this helps to reduce the activity of estrogen in the body. Now, another more recent study has shown uh, still another benefit of plant-based diets when it comes to PMS. This study shows that women who consume more non-heme iron, this is the kind of iron we find in plant foods, have a 30 to 40% lower risk of developing PMS than women who don't consume so much heme iron. In other words, this study just used a different marker, in this case, non-heme iron, to determine that the plant-based diet is better for avoiding or reducing PMS symptoms than an animal foods-based diet. Now, I just want to say something about this more in a global sense. Menstruation has been medicalized in westernized nations. It's become a condition that requires treatment, and it's amazing how much time and money we spend treating it here in the United States. Now, just to put this in perspective, the average woman will have about 500 menstrual periods in her lifetime. And is it really plausible that nature designed women to be miserable 500 times during adulthood in response to what is a normal function? It just, the whole idea just defies logic. So I always tell women PMS is a gentle, or in some instances, not so gentle reminder that something is terribly wrong. The types of habits that that cause PMS, which is, for example, consuming too much animal food, dairy products, not enough plant food, these are also the types of eating habits that increase the risk of much more serious conditions like breast and ovarian cancer. So adopt a diet that reduces PMS symptoms and you will at the same time um, get rid of or reduce your risk of developing some much more serious conditions too. All right, so the next topic. Some things just don't go, don't go away, no matter how much we talk about them. Soy, it seems like every so many weeks I have to come on this program and talk about soy. And last week it was the Mediterranean diet. Uh, this week we're gonna return to the vitamin D issue. It's a very misunderstood topic and I, 
talk to at least one person a day through email or somebody I'm in a conversation with who's being told to take vitamin D supplements, sometimes in toxic amounts in my opinion, to remedy what, as it turns out, is a non-existent deficiency. Now just to set the record straight, normal vitamin D levels are between 20 and 30 nanograms and that's a level that's pretty easy to reach if you're consuming, if you're getting out the sun and consuming a healthy diet. I won't go through all of the, regurgitate all the stuff about sunlight and proper diet and vitamin D levels uh, in this message, but um, I do want to address a study that provides more evidence that all this supplementation is maybe a bad idea. A major shortcoming in the health field, and you've heard me discuss this before, is that once we determine that a nutrient or a hormone or something is valuable, and a little bit of it's good, then lots of it must be better, and I think that's part of what plagues us on this vitamin D issue. A new study provides more evidence that more is not better in the vitamin D field. In this study, a group of German researchers determined that pregnant women with lower vitamin D level, levels generally delivered children who were less likely to develop allergies than mothers with higher vitamin D levels. The kids of women who consumed more vitamin D during pregnancy were more likely to have allergic responses to things like egg whites, milk protein, wheat flour, peanuts, and soy. Additionally, the German researchers were able to identify a mechanism of action that explained this relationship, and this is very important. Regulatory T cells are important in preventing overreaction to allergens, which thereby reduces the risk of allergies. The higher the blood levels of vitamin D in the mothers and their children, the lower the levels of regulatory T cells. And so the researchers were able to conclude that excess vitamin D could suppress the development of proper immune function and increase the risk of allergy. Well, it's unfortunate that some wrong ideas about diet, health, and medicine just won't go away. Several like mammograms, omega-3 fats, and vitamin D have developed an almost cult-like following which is impervious to evidence-based discussions, and this fervor unfortunately confuses the public and stands in the way of improving public health. So I guess part of my job in the world these days is to talk to you guys a couple times a week and try and set the record straight and continue to come back to what the evidence says so that we can use evidence to make our decisions about diet, health, and medicine. Okay, I'm going to stop for today. That's all. Please feel free to pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday.